When we were kids, we used to play a game called Treasure Map. In this game, we imagined ourselves as pirates, looking for a treasure of gold and silver coins, which was hidden on a desert island. Today, the greatest pirates in the world no longer sail the high seas. They wear suits and have offices on Wall Street. They don't care too much for gold and silver. Instead, they trade digital assets, such as stocks and bonds, trying to skim a few percentage points off of your retirement savings. But what if I told you that there are still treasure maps out there? They may not be scribbled on a piece of parchment, but they can still help you make a fortune. These maps are financial charts. They don't look as exciting as the treasure maps of old, but if you study them carefully, there is a great deal of knowledge that can be gleaned from them. People in the precious metals community are often suspicious of charts. They argue that the prices of gold and silver are heavily manipulated, and therefore it is impossible to derive any meaningful information from analyzing their price charts. There is some truth to that. I myself have argued repeatedly that the precious metals markets are subject to manipulation and that their official prices are a mirage. And yet I believe that on very long time scales of decades and centuries, these charts can still provide important insights into the world in which we live. The treasure map which I would like to present to you today is the Dow to Silver Ratio over the past 120 years. This is not a chart which is often discussed. Most analysts prefer to look at the Dow to Gold Ratio which is equally interesting. But since the Dow Jones is an index of industrial companies and since silver nowadays is primarily an industrial metal, the ratio between the two has its own story to tell. It stands to reason that the price of silver should be linked to the Dow Jones because silver has a limited supply and the higher the shares of these companies rise, the more resources they have in order to bid up the price of silver. As we will see, in recent decades this ratio has gone completely haywire and therefore it is likely to experience a reversion to the mean. When we examine the chart without any annotations, it doesn't look very impressive. The ratio fluctuates up and down, seemingly in a random fashion. It is only once we start placing the captions that we realize that the twists and turns in this graph correspond directly with major events in the history of the 20th century. Prior to World War I and the establishment of the Federal Reserve, this ratio was pretty stable and moved in a narrow range between 80 and 160 ounces of silver per one share of the Dow. In my view, this behavior is in line with a healthy economy, which is growing at a moderate pace. After the war, however, the ratio began to grow exponentially. During the Roaring Twenties, it had risen almost tenfold, from 80 to 782. This was no doubt the result of a rapid expansion of the money supply and the consequent bubble in the stock market. The Dow to Silver ratio peaked in 1930, shortly after the epic crash in Wall Street. It then had a huge reversal, as the United States entered the Great Depression and the bubble deflated. But this was just the beginning of an entire century in which this ratio has been out of whack. During World War II, the Dow to Silver ratio floundered between 240 and 440. Not reaching as high as it did during the stock market bubble, but not able to fall to its historical values either. Only once the war was over 
and the United States emerged as the leading superpower, could the ratio rally once more? I tend to believe that in the post-war era, the rising Dow to silver ratio reflected genuine growth and not only inflation. Although FDR confiscated the gold in 1933, silver coins were still in circulation, supplying the public with a reliable medium of exchange and unit of account. The United States was therefore on a de facto silver standard which allowed it to prosper. However, all good things must come to an end. During the 1960s, inflation was picking up and the dollar was beginning to lose value. Instead of addressing the problem and cutting spending, the Johnson administration decided in 1965 to eliminate silver from US coins. We usually mark the beginning of the fiat currency era in 1971, when President Nixon suspended the convertibility of the dollar into gold for foreign nations. But as a matter of fact, it began several years earlier, when silver coins were no longer used on a day-to-day -day basis. Unsurprisingly, this coincided with the Dow to silver ratio topping at around 800 ounces of silver per one share of the Dow. Inflation was squeezing the profit margins of corporations. Their costs were rising, while the income of their customers was stagnant. Subsequently, the Dow Jones started moving sideways, in a frustrating price action which would last for over a decade. Silver, on the other hand, was now freely traded, and as of 1972, its price began to rise dramatically. As a result, the Dow to silver ratio collapsed. It continued to fall until 1980, when Paul Volcker jacked up interest rates all the way to 20%. At that point, it required only 18 ounces of silver in order to purchase one share of the Dow. As you can see, trading this ratio could have made you a fortune. If you were smart enough to notice back in 1961 that the Dow to silver ratio had topped, sold your entire stock portfolio and converted it into physical silver, and then just waited for 19 years, you could have increased your stock holdings by a factor of 44. The trouble, of course, is being able to identify when this ratio is topping and when it is bottoming. I'm afraid that there is no sure way to know, but there are some indications we can use in order to identify tops and bottoms. After 1980, we saw the most spectacular rally in the stock market, which lasted until the height of the dot-com bubble in the year 2000. Simultaneously, silver had the worst bear market ever in which it lost over 90% of its value and went nowhere for 20 years. No wonder then that the Dow to silver ratio set a new all-time high, far exceeding anything we've seen prior to that. It topped in April of 2001, when 2,580 ounces of silver were needed in order to purchase one share of the Dow. Although it seems to us that the stock market has rallied tremendously since then, in terms of silver, it has never been able to match this top, and I suspect that it never will. After the bursting of the dot-com bubble, the Dow to silver ratio collapsed yet again, falling all the way to 251 by April of 2011. Again, whoever followed this treasure map, sold his stock portfolio at the top, switched to physical silver and held onto it for 10 years, could have increased his stock holdings tenfold. After 2011, the Dow to silver ratio rallied yet again. The stock market was recovering from the 2008 financial crisis 
and silver suffered a huge correction. The ratio topped in 2018 at 1,883 ounces of silver for one share of the Dow. Since then, inflation has reared its ugly head. The trillions of dollars which were printed during the pandemic found their way to consumer goods, raising everyone's cost of living. Nominally, the stock market continued to rally, but in terms of silver, the Dow Jones is yet to set a new high. Could it be that it topped in 2018? Are we headed for another collapse in the Dow to silver ratio? Is this a replay of the events we have seen during the Great Depression in World War II? What is the final outcome likely to be? We will answer all of these questions momentarily. But first, I would like to address each and every one of you. If you enjoy this content and would like to see more of it, please consider donating in the link which appears in the description below. I appreciate your contributions, and they help me keep this channel going. Let's get back to our treasure map. According to my experience, it is better to analyze long-term charts on a logarithmic scale. Due to the effects of inflation and compounding returns, long-term charts tend to emphasize movements which occurred recently, and obscure those which happened long ago. Switching to log scale allows us to see everything more clearly. There you go. Now we can notice a certain pattern, which repeats twice throughout this chart. The first instance took place between 1921 and 1945. The second one began in 1980 and is still playing out till this very day. In technical analysis, we call these triangles a pennant formation, and it denotes indecision. It is characterized by a series of movements, up and down, which are converging to a certain point. A pennant formation may break up or down, and it usually does so sometime in the last third of the triangle. A break in any direction is likely to yield a quick movement in the same direction, which is equal to the amplitude of the pennant. However, in the case of the Dow to silver ratio during the 1930s and 40s, this was not the case. At the end of World War II, the ratio broke down and yet continued to drift upward until it rolled over 20 years later and collapsed. Why did that happen? My interpretation is that the ratio correctly identified the tendency of the US government to overspend and to devalue the dollar. Hence, it initially broke down. However, since the US emerged from the war as victorious, this gave a huge boost to its economy. American companies could easily retool their factories to produce cars and refrigerators instead of tanks and ammunition. And after long years of austerity, the public was eager to consume these products. This burst of activity lasted for about 20 years before the inflationary tendencies of the US government caught up with it and gave us the stagflation of the 1970s. Only then was the cycle completed, and the Dow to silver ratio could drop to its historical values. Nowadays, the ratio is again in a pennant formation. It began with the dot-com bubble, which in hindsight was probably the greatest we shall ever see. And although many years have passed since then, this cycle is still playing out. As you can see, in spite of endless monetary and fiscal stimulus, the ratio was never able to set a new all-time high. It is trapped between these two converging lines, waiting for a decision. And right now, it looks as though it is rolling over, and about to break down. Such a breakdown shouldn't surprise us at all, since inflation is already here. And since the US government 
is spending with reckless abandon. What would be surprising is if later the ratio will drift upward, like it did after World War II. Remember, the US is not about to win another world war. Economically speaking, it is not half as powerful as it was back then. From a nimble manufacturing economy, it has turned into a cumbersome consumption economy, which is highly dependent on imports from the rest of the world. No, if this pennant breaks down, I fail to see anything but the collapse of the Dow to silver ratio, similar to what we've seen during the 1970s. Now let's take a step back and connect the dots. If we consider the entire past century as one huge technical formation, describing the transition from a gold standard to a silver standard and finally to a fiat standard, the result is quite striking. It appears that the Dow to silver ratio is charting what is known as a megaphone formation. This is a broadening pattern which is inherently unstable and tends to indicate a reversal of a trend. If the current pennant is about to break down, it stands to reason that the ratio is headed to the bottom of this formation. Amazingly enough, this suggests a Dow to silver ratio of 10 or less. This means that by selling your stock portfolio right now, converting it into physical silver and waiting, in a few years time you will be able to purchase 140 times more shares than you currently own. This could happen in several ways. The deflationary route is that the Dow Jones loses over 99% of its value, while the price of silver remains the same. The inflationary route is that the price of silver rises 140 times, while the price of the Dow remains the same. That, by the way, suggests a price of silver of close to $4,000 per ounce. Naturally, we could also have any combination of the two. For instance, the Dow Jones dropping by 90%, while silver rising to $400 per ounce. I realize how absurd these scenarios may seem, especially to investors who have grown accustomed that the price of stocks can only rise and the price of commodities can only fall. But what this chart is indicating is a complete paradigm shift in which everything we've known will be thrown to the dustbin of history. Before I leave you, a word of caution. Even if this scenario plays out and the Dow to silver ratio collapses in the coming years, this will probably not happen in a straight line. At first, the ratio may find support around 8 to 900, where it meets the lower bound of the current pennant. This could lead to a significant rally in the stock market and to a deep correction in the price of silver. If the pennant indeed breaks down, the ratio may find support at any number of points along its way. Each of them may yield a counter trend rally in the stock market, which will confuse investors and draw them back in. Finally, this scenario is expected to play out over several years and perhaps several decades. So even if you do hold the correct treasure map in your hand, it may take years before you can realize your gains and purchase that Lambo you've been dreaming of. Charts of this kind are helpful over the very long term and can only serve those who have a great deal of patience. I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you for listening to the Silver Hermit Podcast. If you like this content, please donate in the link which appears in the description below. Please subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends and family. Hit the bell icon to be notified whenever I release a new video. Remember, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. 
This video is intended for general informational purposes only and should not be regarded as investment advice. Before taking any investment decision, please consult with a professional financial advisor who may assess your personal investment objectives and needs.